Welcome to Brett Ridgeway's Learning for Life. This is Lesson 1, Part 1. Learning Part A, or the first part of Red Wing. And Red Wing is, we're playing this in uh, G tuning. And just as a bit of trivia, it's actually found in parts of The Wizard of Oz. So we're going to get started with the tune. And we're starting on the fourth string with three pickup notes, which are very common. Open, two, four all on the fourth string. I'm playing that open pointer finger, ring finger. Skip a fret, you skip a finger. And then the third string. And you're gonna do a double thumb here. Fifth, and then the, the third string. So notice that these are played on the offbeat. So instead of trying to count it out, and, and hopefully if you've been doing my lessons, you know how to do the double and the triple thumbing, but try to imitate the sound. I'm just gonna play this over uh, a few different times. real slow and then the second string open and then the first string open and we're going to do another double thumb Same thing, fifth string and third string. If you accidentally hit the second string, it doesn't matter. That's a G chord, that's a G chord, that's a G chord, that's a G chord. It doesn't matter, you're just filling in. One more time. I did it on the second string. Then the second string, make a C chord. You don't have to make the full C chord, but you want to put these two fingers down. Your pointer finger on the second string at one, your ring finger on the first string at two. And you're hitting the second string and then the uh, first string. Then up to five with your ring, back with your ring to two, and then open. So make the C chord, second string, first string, up, slide up to five, second string, and then open. and you're doing another double thumb. Make sure that's all memorized. You're gonna play the second string open, then second fret, or first fret. Sorry about that. So open, second string, then first fret, then open, picking off the fifth string. You're just making a D7, you're hitting that third string. And then the second string, then 
open, make your D7 again, then open. Again. That's just the first string, uh, second string, first fret. Make your D7, hit the third string. Then the second string, you're still holding the first fret. Then open, make your D7 again. Now, let me just do it this way. That's your melody. that fifth string. So let's do it from the beginning. the second string, sorry about that. Then the second, uh, third string, second fret again. Fourth string, just like your pickup notes. Let's do it from the beginning. Apologize for the mistake in there. Here we go. Now, if you notice, I'm doing these fill-ins with my thumb very soft, and I'm hitting the melody harder. to the third string and do a slide two to four. Go back to two and do a pull off. Then the fourth string at two. notice I did something different and again I'm, I do this all in my head instead of doing the pull off I did a hesitation and just went down to the fourth string second fret so you have an option you can go like that Actually, I like that one myself a little bit better. That's probably how I play it when I'm not thinking. So you just slide up, 
hesitation and go back to the fourth string, second fret, then open. So you have that choice. So we're halfway through with part A, but let's do that again. Then the tune starts over without the pickup notes. So do you see how phrases one and three are identical? You're just starting the tune over again without the pickup notes. So let's play up to that point again. going to be the same. And this is where it switches. Your pickup notes to the third string. So a lot of repetition in this. Let's do this one more time from the beginning. I'm going to try to do it very slow. It's actually hard to do it very slow, but because you're thinking. And again, this goes back to teaching your fingers to play, just like when I said here. Um, that, that's really what you want to be able to do is just play it without thinking about what you're playing. So that's where this memory comes in. This is where the muscle memory comes in, understanding things, and eventually you'll start just mixing it up and playing it however you want to play it differently maybe than what I'm teaching you right now. So here we go from the beginning. So take your time with this. I, I haven't said this in a while, but I hold to it. Enjoy the journey. Don't rush through this. Learn it well. You know, every song that I teach, I'm not following tablature. I'm not looking at it. Um, you know, I've got almost 200 lessons on Clawhammer banjo, and all of it's in my head. That is my goal for you. Not that you need a tablature, not that you have to have a book. You know, and I, and I have tab books. I'm not against tab books, but learning it this way and even using a tab book and learning it in the same process is going to help you really understand and play your banjo rather than just reading the tab and, and being able to improvise and switch. So take your time with this. Enjoy it. Memorize part A. We'll see you next week for part B. I want to thank my patrons for making these lessons possible. Uh, I used to charge for these lessons, uh, and I did okay charging for lessons, but I wanted to try something so everyone can have access to these lessons without a subscription, absolutely free, and that's only possible because there are those willing to give back. At the $5 entry level, you get a sticker that says, I support traditional, mu traditional music, Brett Ridgeway's Learning for Life. Uh, very adorable. It's a very nice sticker. Uh, we also have... Uh, patron exclusive materials, which I'm bringing back. I didn't do them last year, but I will be doing them this year. And there's also patron exclusive lessons from the year before that. 
And then you're invited to a monthly Zoom meeting where we do workshops, where we discuss things, where if somebody has a problem with something, hearing cords, understanding cords, we cover that. Uh, some of these workshops are what I charge for in other festivals that the patrons get for free. Uh, so thank you patrons and to anyone who might consider becoming a patron. Your help is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. God bless.